The next major step is translation. And this is when we take messenger RNA and we actually create a protein. Again, back to my cooking analogy, this is when we're taking the recipe and actually building the protein. First, the messenger RNA needs to leave the nucleus and go to somewhere where it can actually build proteins. The messenger RNA is going to attach to a subunit of rRNA, ribosomal RNA, and those subunits will self-assemble into a functional ribosome. And remember that ribosomes are the organelles that will build proteins. The ribosome is going to read the messenger RNA and actually build the protein. And remember the messenger RNA has codons on it, and that's the code that will indicate what the order of amino acids would be. So it's going to start by reading the first three nitrogen bases on the messenger RNA. And those first three are always going to be AUG. Why will they always be AUG? Well, when we were talking about initiation in transcription, the start codon is always TAC. Then the resulting messenger RNA must be AUG. The ribosome is going to grab a transfer RNA with the matching anticodon and its attached amino acid. In this case, the matching anticodon to AUG is going to be UAC. And that happens to code for the amino acid methionine. The ribosome is going to slide over and read the next codon on the messenger RNA, the three-letter code. It's going to grab a second transfer RNA to match to that second codon. Now we have two amino acids next to each other, and the ribosome is going to bond those adjacent amino acids together. You're going to repeat this process. It's going to bring in a transfer RNA with the matching amino acid, and that's going to bond to the second amino acid. And this will continue until you reach the stop codon in the messenger RNA. At the stop codon, the ribosome subunits will come apart, and the completed protein will be released. So again, a picture is a better way to visualize what's happening here. So here we have that messenger RNA, and the blue uh, big molecule is our ribosome. We've got codons that are being read, and the ribosome is bringing in the proper matching codon and anticodon, and the transfer RNA on the other side has an amino acid. When the two amino acids are next to each other, they will be bonded, and we get this long chain of amino acids. I want you to notice that the transfer RNA that gets released no longer has an amino acid. What it's going to do is float around in the cell and find a free floating amino acid that matches its anticodon and bond to that. So it will then be ready to bring in those new amino acids. So then it will be ready. Sometimes we call this a charged transfer RNA. It's got an amino acid attached to it. So one of the reasons that we need to eat proteins in our diet is so that we have free amino acids floating around. Those were broken down from other proteins. We can charge our transfer RNAs, and they're going to have the ingredients needed to build new proteins. This table is the actual code of life. I think it's pretty amazing that it's just this fairly simple table. This is showing what on a messenger RNA the code means. So if you have a codon that is UUA, that means leucine. UCU, that means searing. So you can go through all of these and figure out these are all the possible combinations. Notice we have three stop codons. And then we also have our AUG, which is a codon for methionine and also the start codon. So what I'd like you to do is take this piece of messenger RNA and spend a couple minutes with this uh, graphic figuring out what the resulting order of amino acids would be. So again, pause this video for a minute and try doing translation yourself. Okay, so if you were a successful ribosome, this is what you would have come up with. 
We've got an order of five amino acids. This is the beginning of a protein. Now remember this order of amino acids will fold into a complex three-dimensional shape and then go do one of the many functions of proteins. I purposely gave you this particular messenger RNA transcript because I wanted to point out a characteristic of the DNA code. It is redundant and what that means is that there's more than one codon per amino acid. So you actually ended up with serine twice but when you were running through the code they were not identical. And so you can see there's several different ways to get proline, serine, there's different ways to get leucine. So the code is redundant. Remember that we only have 20 different kinds of amino acids, but there's actually 64 different combinations of codons. What's equally important to recognize is that the DNA code is not ambiguous. So one codon never equals more than one amino acid. So if you have CCU, it always means proline. It doesn't sometimes mean serine. So that means that the code works really, really well. Uh, there's some redundancy built into the code, um, but it's never an ambiguous code. I also think one of the things that is truly amazing about all living things is that this is the code for humans, for whales, for oak trees, for the simplest bacteria. This is even the code that viruses use. It's truly a universal code.